Okay, good day everyone. My name is Indra Emanuel Gunawan and today I'm going to present one of the paper that I read for my deep learning midterm exam. The paper that I read is called Adversarial Target Invariant Representation Learning for Domain Generalization, written by Albuquerque, Monteiro, Darvishi, Falk, and Mitliakas 2020. This paper reads a state-of-the-art result for the PACS dataset, which one of the dataset that is usually used for domain generalization tasks. Okay, let's start this presentation. Okay, first let's do a little background check on deep neural networks. We all know that deep neural networks, they can work really great for image classification tasks. And this is the common assumption for the setting in the deep neural network task in which the training data and the test data, they look similar. Just like, you know, in MNIST, we use like the same data for training and testing. But in real life, uh, there, there are a lot of data that comes from different domains. I mean, like different settings. For this example, this example is using the office dataset in which the first row is image from the Amazon web page and the second one is from a DSLR camera and the third row is from a webcam camera. And usually what we want is for the model to learn on one of these domain and be able to recognize image from another domain, like the same image, but from another domain. And this causes a problem because they have a different distribution because they come from a different domain. There is a covariate shift. And this is usually commonly known as domain shift problem. And researchers have tried to mitigate this problem by a task that is commonly known as domain adaptation. So in domain adaptation, usually what we want is we want the image from the source domain to adapt to the target domain. And as you can see, the image in the source domain, they usually rather have the images in like clear setting. The object in the image is very clear to see. This, is big, this, this makes the image easier to learn. And we want the images that is easier to learn to be adapted to these settings, these two mids where there is some angle and illumination variable that comes into place. And this is how domain adaptation training is usually done. Like the model is usually trained on both of the data, like the data from the source and the data from the target domain. And some of the papers, uh, they use like adversarial learning or like some deep supervised learning but one of the most popular one is actually unsupervised domain adaptation. But domain adaptation itself, they have a problem. Like, consider this. What if there is another target domain? Like, there is not just one target domain. We have another target domain. Basically, we want this model to, be also, to also be able to recognize not only from this domain, but also from data from this domain. In domain adaptation task, this we we have to retrain the model. We have to retrain the model using data from this source domain and the new target domain. And it can be quite inefficient if the data is very many. There, there are lots of data and it can be time consuming. And this is where domain generalization comes into place. In Domain generalization, there is no target domain involved, no data from the target domain involved in the training. We only use the data in the source domain. But here's the difference. In the domain generalization, instead of only one domain act as a source domain, we, we use multiple source domains. So as you can see here, we use the data from the Amazon domain, the DSLR domain, and the webcam domain as source domains. And the goal of domain generalization is we hope that the model that is trained on this multiple source domain can recognize data from any domain or 
in other words, target invariant. This means that the model can learn any data from any domain. And by any domain or target invariant, this also means that the data from a domain that is not included as one of the source domains. So if even if the data comes from an unseen domain, it is hoped that with domain generalization, the model can recognize that data. Okay, so this is a little background and problem setup that the author makes. Uh, but in this paper, I summarize it a bit. So this is basically just saying like the variable set is and basic calculation that is being done in this paper. So first the basic stuff, uh, the capital X represents the data set and capital Y represents the label for that data set in which Y can be either a zero or a one. And the example corresponds to a pair of X and Y which whereas X comes from capital X and Y comes from capital Y. And Y is defined as FX where, whereas FX is a deterministic labeling function. Uh, this basically means uh, FX is uh, the true label for the data X. And there is also a domain. Domain is defined, denoted as D, which is a joint probability distribution over X and Y. And there is something that is called H. Uh, this can also be defined as HX where H is a part of capital H, where capital H is a set of candidate hypotheses. HX is, a, HX is basically the hypothesis of the output, which means our estimate, like our the output of the model. RH is defined as the loss between HX and FX, whereas R is the risk associated with given hypothesis H on domain D. And the loss L quantifies how different HX, uh, the output from our model, from FX, the true label from the data set for a given data instant X and Y. Okay, now here are more variables that are used in this paper. There is something that is called T, but with this writing style. Uh, basically, this is a meta distribution composed by both the source domain TS and the target domain TT. And the number of source and target domain is represented by NS for the source domain and NT for the target domain. So this is basically how you define the source domain and the target domain. Uh, you see there is an I and J on top of them. Basically, this means like the I source domain where I is an element of one until how, however many the number of source domain is which is denoted as n s and j is basically mean like the j target domain where j is an element of one until however many the number of target domain is uh, denoted as n t and this is basically an illustration of how this meta domain distribution is. So it consists of like all of the source domain and all of the target domain. And there is something that is called TH of TIS and TKS. This is basically the H divergence between the I and K source domains, which is TIS and TKS. And this TH is bounded by epsilon, where epsilon represents the maximum pairwise H divergence across all source domains, where I and K is an element of one until NS. It is assumed all examples that appear at test time can be explained by a mixture of the source domains. And this formula basically explains that where the example, any example from test time, which means any example from the target domain, that is why it's called TJT, can be explained by a mixture of the source domain. That's why there is a TIS here. 
and so it can be defined that the edge divergence between DTK and DTJ is bounded by a mean function, minimum function of 2 and 2 epsilon. Now this is the method that the author used for the domain generalization task. Basically, they want to minimize epsilon by adversarial approach. And in doing so, they use three main modules. The first is the feature extractor F with phi, pi as parameter, and test classifier C with theta as parameter. And edge divergent estimators, uh, I'm going to call this big theta, big theta with parameters theta in which the j is an element of 1 until ns and they use uh, something that's called one versus all method where a model is responsible for discriminating examples from one source domain from all the others and because they use adversarial approach they basically do this uh, this is a familiar formula isn't it this is the min max game uh, you uh, you can also find this in can can generative adversarial network which i think popularized the adversarial approach and as you can see there is two laws here the lc and the lj basically the lc is the task related loss and each LJ represents the loss for one versus all domain binary classification task. So our feature extractor here, F, uh, the, it attempts to minimize LC uh, by doing maximization of LJ, which is the loss provided by the domain discriminator. So you can see like the adversarial approach here when one is trying to minimize and the other one is trying to maximize the loss. One loss is getting more minimum while the other is getting larger, more maximum. And this is the illustration of how the outdoor approach. Uh, and this is an illustration of how the method. And this is an illustration of how the outdoor approach this domain generalization basically this is the input drive there's a batch x and there is the first source second source and third source domain and they use fx the feature extractor to extract this and to and they use f their feature extractor in which the f will result first uh, uh, a prediction function like like a prediction of like what what this image is and there is the domain discriminator here which will put in this edge divergent space uh, in which the y will return one if the compared image is the same with the the, the source but zero if the image that is being compared is different with the source and this is how the experiment is being done they use the leave one domain out scheme basically train the model on all the domains but one and test the model on that one domain that being left out in the training and they use a pre-trained model on the ILS VRC dataset and signalization and to make it fair each experiment only given a budget of 200 epochs and label smoothing on the task classifier is done to prevent overfitting then the model is also trained using SGT with polyax acceleration and the learning rate was also warmed up for a number of training iteration equal to NW hyperparameter tuning so all of this parameter the hyperparameter tuning is also performed and each model was run with three different initializations random seed 1 10 and 100 selected a priori and the and the experiment that i want to focus on is on the pacs dataset uh, in which they they reach a state-of-the-art result 
So, what is the PACS dataset? PACS dataset is basically a set of data that comes from four domains, the photo, art painting, cartoon, and sketch domain. And this is an illustration of how the training on the PACS dataset is usually done. So in training time, they use three out of the four domain as the source domains. In this example is the photo, art, painting, and cartoon. So three of these domains acts as the source domains for the training. And in the testing, they use an unseen domain in the training, which is the sketch. Uh, domain. That's basically how the experiment is being done. And this is the result of the experiment. And as you can see, the average is 73.55%. It's the highest out of the any other method for the P for the PACS dataset. So in conclusion is minimization of pairwise edge divergence on the source domains induces small divergence across any two target domains. And besides the amount of data, the dataset should also consider the diversity of the data. And that's all from me. Thank you very much for listening.